Hello, my wonderful friends. My little horses. Baby horses. Whatever we are. There's a bunch of different words. It is time for Neckbeard Stories. From Reddit user Von Vampira. That's a cool name. The Tale of Emo Beard. Oh, boy. Hey, Moonhorse. Hey. I love hearing you read stories and your commentary. You're too kind. So I decided to share one of my own stories. I'm excited. I'm new to Reddit, so forgive me for formatting issues and all that. Call me Vamp. I will. To describe myself, I'm a pretty nerdy girl. I'm into comics, cosplay, anime, manga, movie culture, D&D, all things nerdy and stuff like that. Not to toot my own horn, but I think I'm fairly attractive, and as you can imagine, prime beard bait. I have many a tale about beards and nice guys, but today I shall entertain you to the tale of emo beard. Oh boy. Oh boy. I was a freshman when I met him, about 14 or 15. Mind you, I was a minor. But at the time, I was a thirsty little emo kid. I was going through some things at the time, but I was trying to get out more. I'm hanging out with some of the kids in my little emo friend group in the mall in my town, which is pretty small and everyone kind of knows everyone anyway. When I was introduced to Emo Beard, he was a friend of one of my best guy friends, and I heard quite a bit about the beard, but only positive things, really. I heard he was tall, had piercings, played guitar, totes hot, every little emo girl's dream. But upon meeting him, he didn't really stack up to everything I dreamed of. He was, in fact, tall, had piercings, played guitar, was indeed emo, but he wasn't the emo god I imagined him to be. No, this guy was incredibly thin, six foot something, 18, and towered over my tiny five foot two self. He had the basic black emo boy hair, snake bite piercings, and did actually have a neck beard, although it was very patchy and prickly, but no facial hair, like no actual beard or mustache whatsoever. He smelled like Axe body spray and cigarettes, or possibly weed. He had really thick black eyeliner and wore a band t-shirt and skinny jeans and carried a guitar. Oh. Oh, he carried it. Oh, that's a special kind of special. Mmm. Moonhorse will definitely entertain you with stories of guitar players in a moment. Immediately, he stood way too close to me and we talked. He just rambled on and on about how he hasn't found his emo princess yet, and how all the girls he dated cheat on him and break his heart, and how he just wants to meet a nice girl who will appreciate him and join him on his journey to be an <laughs> journey to be a musician and bring emo culture back and destroy the posers. Yeah, even as a then emo kid myself, I cringed at this. Oh, oh I bet you did. That is magical. The next day at school, my friends told me that he was totally into me and thinks that I'm hot. And me being totally thirsty and lonely, I get excited. And the next time I saw him at the mall, he asked me to walk with him. And we talked a bit before he held my hand and began <laughs> to sing. Oh! If I'm James Dean, you're Audrey Hepburn, which, in my opinion, was... Very emo couple song. I have no idea what that means, but okay. After his serenade, he asked me to be, and I shit you not, his emo princess. Oh god, I hope he said it just like that too. Um, and I said yes. And at the end of the day, he told me he couldn't exactly keep in contact with me since he doesn't have a phone and said he could only use kick on his sister's phone. So we really couldn't talk much. A couple days later, we meet up at the mall for a date, which was really me sitting there and hearing him play guitar. <laughs> he brought the guitar to the mall. Okay. And hanging out with his friends. The next day, I was going to meet up with my friends and sitting there talking to my friend, and I felt this cold, bony hand stroke my neck and cheek. Yeah, it's emo beard. He towered over my tiny self and bent above me and tried to kiss me like Spider-Man. But I turned my head. My friend seeing this called me out and said why didn't I kiss my boyfriend, to which I couldn't come up with an excuse, and they all told me that I should, and it was romantic, and... <laughs> God, I remember when the Spider-Man kiss thing was a thing. 
Uh, anyway, I said okay, and he bent over, and he kissed me, and all my friend's eyes are on us, and he had these thin, chapped lips, and these piercings, and that's how my first kiss went. Ooh, I'm sorry. Literally the most awkward thing ever. After that shit show, we went to the small food court in the mall, but when I go to sit down, I hear a shrill, Babe, you have to sit on my lap. Which really creeped me out after my friends poking fun at me for not being a good girlfriend. I got up and sort of sat on his leg, but it was really uncomfortable because he's super bony. And he proceeded to pull me further onto his lap and brush his lips on my neck, which felt really weird because of the lip piercings and not so quietly whispers into my ear, Oh, God. Hey, can you feel it? <clears throat> Me being a total fucking idiot ass. Feel what? First off, that's telling. Secondly, to which he replied all too happily, My monster t- <laughs> My monster t- <laughs> Oh, oh! what a gift you have given me this day. <sighs> Can't you feel it? I'm like super hard right now. Writing this physically pains me as I feel the need to cringe and disgust deep in my bones. I am more than happy that you wrote this. That is funny as shit. Thank you. After his comment, I try to get off his lap, but he only pulls me tighter. The only way I got away is because he said that he liked my band shirt and he wanted to see if it fit him. I had an undershirt on, so I took off the shirt, to which he commented, Wow, can't wait to see you naked. <laughs> Ew. As the day went on, he monopolized every conversation to talk about how he had a... He had a big dick and knows how to use it and can't wait to show me everything he knows. He's what we like to refer to as the Jackrabbit. It only takes him three seconds and he only knows one move. Or about the emo agenda. <laughs> and how he's a real emo and the people here were fakes and all about his exes were bitches and he was such a nice guy. And always treated them right, but they used him and cheated on him. I was more than excited for my mom to pick me up, only for her to tell me that I should offer my friends rides home. My only saving grace was that I sat in the front and Hemo Beard had to sit in the back. A few days later, I found out from a friend that Emo Beard had two other girlfriends. And although he was a total disgusting jizz bag, I was crushed and felt like shit. Yeah, ouch. A day later, I texted my friend, who happened to be hanging out with Emo Beard, to break up with him for me. He tells me he was utterly crushed, that he didn't do anything but love me. And when I checked his Instagram, I saw these weird selfies with captions about how he lost the Emo love of his life and how he cannot find love. A week later, he posts a picture of some other Emo girl in my grade, and with that, I conclude the tale of my week-long, week-long, okay, relationship with the Emo Neckbeard. I did see him in the mall not long after the breakup. He was walking with a mutual friend of ours and was carrying a very large bottle of Mountain Dew. Classy. And the second he saw me, he dropped it and ran away. I'm so glad I never let that relationship drag on. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, my God. Von Vampira, you have given me a wonderful gift. You have no idea the floodgates of madness you are capable of opening with this. See, I'm willing to bet, from the way that you talked about him, Von Vampira, I'm willing to bet you don't know about the guitar guy. Let me tell you guys about the guitar guy. See, when you start playing guitar, there is a, a point where you're going to learn about the guitar guy. And whether or not that is a positive or negative, an early or a late discovery is entirely up to you. I started playing guitar when I was 18, mainly because I really just wanted to play music like the people I really liked. 
Uh, I wanted to emulate some of the styles and kind of vicariously live through this kind of thing. It's like, I like the Rolling Stones, I can play the Rolling Stones, I feel more connected to the Rolling Stones because now I can play this song. Does that mean that everybody needs to do this? Fuck no. If that doesn't, you know, if that's not a thing for you, don't fucking care. This is just for me. That was just a thing I wanted. So, that being said, I learned to play guitar simply because of that. However, I learned about the guitar guy relatively early. See, I had this friend. Not entirely neckbeard, but kinda. We'll call him Z. Z was... had a lot of... well, he, he had a lot of neckbeard traits, but more than anything, Z was a fucking prick. Bottom line, he was a fucking prick. He was really shitty to people because he really wanted to be, like, you know, the popular kid. We were in high school, just to kind of pan this out. He would throw people under the bus specifically because he wanted people who were more popular than whoever his friends were at the time to like him. A.K.A. a fucking prick. So, he was slightly younger than me. I being 18, he was about 16 when he decided to learn how to play guitar. And this is how... This is the beginning. This isn't how, but this is the beginning. Symbols of the difference between someone who wants to learn an instrument and someone who's that guy. I can only describe specifically the guitar guy because I play guitar. I don't know if there's a variant of this for other instruments, but I'm willing to bet there is. So I started to play, as I said, because I really wanted to learn music. I wanted to kind of understand the mechanics behind what it is that it goes into playing a song, especially on a guitar, and I really like the sound of an electric guitar, so I was down with this. Z specifically told me on more than one occasion that he wanted to learn how to play guitar because, and I'm quoting, <laughs> chicks get dig guys who play guitar. Yeah, that's it. That's, like I said, he kind of had these neckbeard tendencies. That was his, that was his fedora. His fedora was, I have a guitar. And his fucking prick tendencies came into the fact that he liked to one-up everybody. So he liked to be better than everybody. And he didn't just have an acoustic guitar. Oh no, he had to have the most expensive one that was fancy. And he would tell you about it constantly. And the reason I bring all of this up is because much, much like a penis, you don't whip your guitar out in public unless somebody really wants you to do it. The fact that he went <laughs> to the mall randomly carrying an instrument for no reason, just because he could, I guess, to prove how sensitive and deep and emo he is, means that he's the guitar guy. And the guitar guy doesn't really play well. They know chords, they could probably play Wonderwall. That was literally a thing that Z could play very well because it's just repeating chords. It's the four chords of pop. And if you can play those, you can play most songs. And the reason Z, of course, learned these is because complicated songs required you to not make weirdly intense eye contact with all the women who are now stuck listening to you because you decided to whip out your guitar penis in the middle of a party. I never went for that. Actually, some of the first stuff I ever learned how to play was, like, surf rock and heavy metal. Because I like complicated sounds. I like shit that really goes places. I was not going to be the guy who has an acoustic guitar and wants to play, like, four chord songs because he's really deep. You know, I, I, I understand the world in a, in a special way. Our relationship is really special. And that's why everything that I do is, is really deep and emotional and special. Yeah, no, that's not fucking true for me. I am not uh, deep, emotional, or special. I'm a fucking psychotic unicorn that likes heavy metal, punk rock, and I probably drink a little too much. Our relationship is hilarious. Because we're funny. That's it. This is not going to be some kind of magical, whimsical thing that winds up in fucking movie theaters. 
This is just funny for the sake of being funny. And that, my dear, is the difference. The guitar guy, holy fucking shit. He's just a prick. And they're usually the kind of guy who... Now, this is very much a male thing, to be honest with you. Uh, they're usually the kind of guy who will do shit like... Exactly like what he did. This whole thing about, like, our relationship is special. Because you're like my princess, you know? You understand me on a deep level. Side note, I'm cheating on you. But you understand me better than they do. But I'll tell them the same thing. Yeah. The guitar guy. I know him well. I wouldn't call him a neckbeard, but he's definitely up there in the douchebag ranks. His douchebaggery is fantastical. And once you know how to spot him, oh, you know him well. So I hope my little explanation has actually helped. With multiple things. But also, learning not just how to spot neckbeards, the odorifus neckbeardicus, but also the guitar guy, douchebaggius sixstringius. Keep your eyes open, children, because they are fucking pricks. So thank you all for watching. I'm gonna stop this here. I've gone on enough of a little fucking ramble here. Uh, <laughs> if you have enjoyed this and would like to submit your own stories about pretty much anything, because honestly, if it's funny, I'll read it, uh, you can do that by sending it to r slash moonhorse stories. I check it every day. And... If you'd like to help keep the lights on in this place, you can donate to my Patreon. And I sell t-shirts and coffee mugs and stuff like that. So, there should be a new design, honestly. I think a new one just came out. I'm pretty sure I just posted it the other day. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope you have a wonderful day. I love you all, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Okay,